So, here we are. Uh, kind of got a, a, a big announcement for me. I don't think it's a big deal to any of you guys, but uh, so decided recently that there might be a, something that's a better fit for me, my style of hunting. So I'm gonna get right to it. I, I'm switching to Matthews. Switching to Matthews. Matthews. It's crazy to even say that, but yeah, I'm, I'm going Matthews and this is what I'm gonna run right now. This is the Matthews Vertex. I've been with a different company for over a decade. You know, sometimes change is hard, but it's necessary to keep elevating your game. And that's what I'm all about. I constantly wanna get better. And I feel like this is gonna make me better at what I do, which is public land elk hunting. So, yeah, it's a 30 inch axle to axle bow, incredibly long riser with really short limbs. So you get really good stability. When you like those limbs are tiny. Yeah, they're very, very short. So the riser length and the axle to axle length is almost the same, which is how you can get away with stability at such a short axle to axle. You know, 10 years ago, everything had like half the riser length that they have today and the limbs were at this kind of an angle. So everything got necked out really far. So when you got down to a 32 inch bow, the riser length was like that long. Yeah. So it felt like this really wonky. This is an incredibly stable bow at a 30 inch axle to axle platform. What was their last year bow? Was I sure it was a triax, which so was look same similar riser, just two inches. It's, it's a little longer bow. It's a little longer, so riser. it's going to be a little bit more stable. Okay. And at a at a shorter draw like this, will absolutely shoot really well without any kind of an issue. Decent if you speed, get up to yeah, right? good like, speed, good speed. It's it's a very fast bow. You get up into that um, 29, 30 inch draw length, you may want to look at the longer bow that they make. But that's at not 29 me. and below. This is a really stable platform. It has a very unique system that has never been put on a bow before. And it's a modular exchange peak weight and length system. So you can change the draw weight without... Yeah, you don't actually have... To, you still have the ability to adjust the, the limb bolt to, to change weight, but they make four different peak weight modules. So what people are, the are... A module is was traditionally created to change the draw length of the bow out. So you take this part out, you take this part out, and you can put a different one in and it would give you a different draw length right. without having to change the whole cam assembly. Well, Matthews took it a step further. They actually went in and put the ability to change the peak weight and the length and the let off all in the particular module. Oh. So if you wanna say shoot 27 inches, 75 pounds, 85% let off, you buy this module, mm -hmm. put it in the bow, both ends, and now your bow peaks at 75 pounds at 27 inches at 85 percent you want to go okay it's december it's cold i do not want to pull 75 pounds yeah and a lot of people would have a different bow setup for that well you can go in pay 50 bucks buy a 60 pound peak module at 27 inches at say 75 percent let off because you want a little more holding weight on that lighter peak weight so it balances better two screws two screws swap it out voila you have a bow that peaks like at it. 60 pounds so very very versatile system all of them have the exact same limb, it's just a module change. So you can actually get multiple different configurations of bow without actually having to buy a different bow, which is really cool. A couple of things that I noticed was the grip was probably a little bit different from last year's. Yes, it's a, it's a different contoured thermal grip. It's wrapped around so your hand doesn't actually touch the riser at any point unless you physically put your fingers on the front. So in cold weather, you're not really gonna notice it which is pretty neat, but it's still very narrow if you can get a good shot of that. It's pretty slim. The less width you have in here, the less of your hand is going to touch the grip, which will typically make it do this less in your hand. The wider you are here, the more likely you are to apply pressure in your hand to torque the bow. So this is a very, very torque friendly grip. We've got an integrated rest. I've never seen that before ever, so we have no bolt. Yeah, there's, if you can see from the side here, the bolt to mount a traditional rest is still on there. This actually, they went through on the Vertex and machined out the riser. So the quad integrated MX slides right onto it so you don't have a rotational point. So when you bolt it in, if it manages to vibrate loose, it can't rotate. It's still square to the same thing. You just tighten the screw back down and you nothing goes wrong, basically. I feel like that would be trend setting for the future. It is very unique and very new, and we'll see how it works out. I think it'll do well. But yeah, it's very clean, very easy. Uh, most of the stuff that Matthews integrates to their bows is a very clean setup. The way their two-piece quivers attach is very tight, very slim, and very light with the carbon rod suspension. Makes up for a very quiet, low recoil, low shock bow, which is what, we have nine different brands here in our store. And when people come in to test fire bows, 
uh, one of the things that I feel they really like is that there there's everything under the sun to try at the same place. Yeah. So you can pick it up, walk over to the bale, and shoot everything and feel which one actually felt better to you on the shot. Yep. And the majority of the time, this is what wins the feel battle because of the way they integrate their parts yeah. and the way they build their product. It, on the shot, it is about the deadest bow you can try. They say it's 20% light, uh, quieter than last year. I'd agree with that. Probably because of the length and then um, harmonic dampening. Yeah. Where where all the the technology and, and keeping this bow quiet? Well, harmonic dampening definitely has play in it, and you can see in their integrated stabilizer they also do that as well. Anytime you have a piece on the bow that's rubber that has weight in the middle of it, it will vibrate and counteract the vibration in the riser yep. itself. So if you feel aluminum in its raw form and hit it on something, it reverberates really hard. Anybody who played, you know, baseball, softball, aluminum baseball bat, it's noticeably more tingy when you make contact with it. Yeah. It vibrates in your hand more. These sort of things help eliminate that. Sure. Any little rubber piece that you can put in that riser, and Matthew's bows all have at least one harmonic damper in the riser somewhere to help absorb I that I did shot. not know that till just looking at it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, strings wise, of course, I'm running your strings. Uh, I think folks should know by now, like, not all strings created equal. And these were built here, stretched here, and then put right on the bow with the and with the exact specs of the factory strings that come from Matthews. So um, I'm sure Matthews strings are good. I just have to go with what I know, and what I know is these strings uh, just seem to work for me. So um, Podium Archer, you can look them up on the web, as well as you can just call Spokane Valley Archery, ask for Josh and you can have your bow sit here, and then you can know that your strings haven't been sitting in a shelf for months on end, and then put on your bow. They're gonna come right upstairs, and go right on to, uh, are we allowed to tell them the material? Yeah, it's 452X low wax. Um, most, most places don't deal with it because it's more expensive, but yeah. if you really want it to not move, you kind of have to buy the best stuff, and it is the most expensive thing you can buy. Same thing with the servings, we all use Halo because it just doesn't give, but it's more expensive. So a lot of your manufactured high quality strings don't use those components because they cost more. Oh. So when you're spending that money and you're looking at your bottom line of how much profit are we making per string and you spent you know, five, six more dollars per yeah. setup to build that, that's cost and they tend to avoid that. So, so I was with, uh, a, I used to use Winner's Choice strings. I no longer use them. Soon, Josh convinced me to try him out for a year and I was sold. So uh, the first elk shape camp, I'd say like only five or so guys brought their bow in. Yeah. And now we're looking at probably a camp with 40 athletes and 50% of the athletes getting their strings here. So you can send your bow here. I want to talk about speed. So IBO on this thing's probably like 340. Get some 340s. 340, 343 is what I read. 343 sounds right. I'm 27 inch draw, I shoot heavy arrow. I shoot like a, a javelin basically, uh, 477 grains at that draw length with only 75 pounds. I mean, realistically, my hunting setup's gonna be probably like 280, 290. Eh, probably 280-ish. 280-ish, okay. Yeah. 290 is probably stretching. If I was 29, I would say 290. So uh, that's the kind of speeds that are more than enough and I can get great broadhead flight. 